There are two kinds of founders, founders who've never heard about cohort analysis and founders who think, well, they know, and you'll find out there's much more to learn. We're gonna cover cohort analysis today at a PhD level, so let's dive in. Hi everyone, welcome to the Headline Deep Dive channel. Deep Dive is Headline's effort to equip founders like you to look at your business like VCs like us. Today's topic, cohort analysis. I have my guest today and friend, Nick Von Blondi, he's on our investment team. We're gonna cover the PhD level of cohort analysis. Hi, Nick. Hey, Conrad, thanks for having me and I'm excited to talk about a topic I've spent way too much time with over the last couple of years. Can you share the boilerplate definition of what a cohort is and why analyzing is important? Absolutely, so first defining the word cohort, a cohort is effectively a subgrouping from a broader population based on a specific characteristic. And in the business context, the most common way of cohorting something is the customers of a business and grouping them around based on when did they first become active with a given business. All customers that started off for the first time in July 2019 form the July 2019 cohort. In the next month, there'll be a new cohort and a new cohort and a new cohort. When I ran my own business as a founder, we, there were many metrics that we had to juggle. We had to do a thing about AR, or overall growth, month to month, churn. Honestly, cohort, I knew about it, but it wasn't on the top of my list. Now being here on the VC side, it is on the top of our list. <laughs> now, why should cohort analysis be the most important thing that founders need to be looking at? All these metrics you just mentioned are usually depicted in nice single bar graphs that hopefully go up and to the right over time. Cohorting users or customers enable us to basically break down these single bar charts into individual groups of customers based on how many customers is a business adding every month, how much revenue are they adding every month, and how much of these customers and this revenue comes from retained users. And ultimately lets us break down this top line performance of a business based on end customer behavior, based on activating new customers and retaining old ones. Many people who have ever seen cohort analysis, they typically look at these percentage, uh, we call triangles, like a, like it's like an Excel chart and you can kind of see it through colors. We here at, on Deep Dive, we actually look at it through what we call a layer cake. I actually think the layer cake is the better way to looking at it because you can get to see sort of how the business is built ground up. Deep Dive is a great way to visualize cohorts. This is a Deep Dive platform right at the top here. We have the what we call cohort layer cake for the very visual reason that you can see on the screen here. And the way to read this chart is that it depicts the total number of customers that a business has broken down into the monthly groups. And if we start all the way here on the left in the first life month here, or the first month of data that we have here, July 2019, we can see that this business added 64 new customers in July 2019. This is the July 2019 cohort. By August, a month later, out of those 60 plus customers, 43 retained into August. And in that same month, the business has added another 151 new customers, the August cohort, to make for 194 total active customers in August 2019. And then effectively every subsequent month, this business is adding a new cohort, a new group of customers, while retaining old ones. And layering all these cohorts on top of each other over time lets us see that this business has over 1,800 paying customers by December 2020, the latest month of data that we have here, and didn't add all of those in that month, but it's really hard work over time of acquiring and retaining old customers that makes up this total customer base. We can take then the same logic over to the revenue as well, where we just look at, instead of how many active customers there are, we look at how much revenue are these customers generating for the business? So the July 2019 cohort generated $6,700 in their first life month and can, can track how much revenue are these cohorts generating over time, layering them on top of each other to get to the total MRR base of close to $200,000 here by December 2020. And it's the stability of these layers that are building up the foundation. Each foundation builds up the next foundation and you keep you going. And it's almost like the enterprise value of the company. I wanna convince you all founders that this way of looking at your cohorts actually is the best way because you can see sort of that foundation being built up. Now there's an analogy we use internally here at Headline and we use, we call it the annuity analogy. Defining annuities, annuities are usually financial products often associated with retirement plans and is effectively a product that pays out a certain amount of money at a certain interval. If we think about monthly subscription businesses or you know businesses with recurring revenue elements, these customers in some sense act as an annuity. We look here and you, you know, this business acquires Requires, you know, new revenue six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars, and then out of the July cohort, and then you know, earn six thousand dollars after the second month, 
thing is kind of goes down to five thousand dollars. But in the long term, they keep generating four thousand dollars out of this July 2019 cohort over time, as if it would be an annuity. Right? And every single month they're adding a new cohort of customers that has similar behavior. And this business over time is stacking annuities on top of each other and is building this enterprise value by acquiring you know, new annuities month over month to grow the business. When I first heard that, my mind was blown. I was like, oh my God, this is the PhD of core analysis. Indeed it is. Thanks Nick for sharing that. If you like what you see, we're gonna keep on going. This is only the first step of core analysis. So stick with us and if you like it, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up and comment below. We'll see you guys next week.